Hey bestie, it's B. Welcome back. You guys, I went to Coachella for the first time and they weren't joking about how you can get like a respiratory infection from the dirt and the dust. So if I sound like I'm out of breath in this video, it's because I am. So take it easy on me. We had to show up cozy today because your girl is in recovery mode right now. But I'm really excited to do this video. So as you have seen from the title, we're talking about lucky girl syndrome. If you're on TikTok, you may have heard this term. And essentially lucky girl syndrome is this idea idea and belief that you're just lucky and everything good happens to you because you're lucky. What was happening was I was getting a lot of people tagging me in videos of lucky girl syndrome because they're like, oh my God, Bria talks about this stuff, but she calls it like delusion. And that is true. There's a lot of similarities between lucky girl syndrome and healthy delusion as I like to call it. But I do think that there are some key differences and that's what I wanted to talk about today because truthfully, you will never hear me call myself lucky. And I'm going to talk to you more about why that is. I really don't subscribe to this idea of lucky girl syndrome. And I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm just saying it's not for me. Before we jump into it, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Also, I've kind of talked about lucky girl syndrome on my podcast, The Delusional Diaries. So make sure that you also tune into those episodes. I have a lot more coming for season two. Can't wait to share with you guys. Definitely don't on that. All right, so let's get into lucky girl syndrome. A little bit of background, I kind of touched on it, but it's basically this idea that you have just operated under the assumption that everything works out for you in your favor. And yes, I talk a lot about this, like operating under the guise of like, hey, good things happen to me, no explanation, like that is that. I just get what I want because I'm highly favored, things are working out for me, the universe is conspiring for me, all those affirmations we've talked about in previous videos. So with lucky girl syndrome, it's really the same premise and it gets you to get into this mindset to where you can accept that good things can happen to you because you are just lucky. So the thing about this is luck to me insinuates that the odds were in your favor. There was a small chance that it would work out and it did. Whereas I think the major difference for me is that I don't believe it's by chance that things are working out for me. So therefore I don't consider myself lucky. I lean more towards this healthy delusion in saying that I am not lucky that things happen for me. I am deserving and worthy and things do work out and will work out for me. And there's just a difference in the confidence. So like when I refer to healthy delusion, I try to teach you guys and I also try to remember within myself that none of this is by accident. I spoke it into existence. I claimed it. It wasn't an accident. And to be honest with you, looking back in the previous years of my success and how I got to this point as a YouTuber, I will be damned if I sit here and tell you it was luck when you know good and well, I worked my ass off to get here. I spoke it, but I also put action behind it. I did not rub a genie lamp and assume that I was lucky. And I really feel as if I would be downplaying my success and my intention by calling it luck when it is not luck to begin with. I think my whole thing with this is I don't resonate with being lucky. I resonate with the idea of taking ownership of my life and that's the difference. So you will never hear me call myself lucky because it's not luck. I sought out the life that I have now because I fully accepted that I am in control. Now I want to be very specific too in saying like I'm not saying lucky girl syndrome is bad. I also think lucky girl syndrome is a great place to start in terms of just priming your mind to get used to the idea of accepting good things happening to you and not having to explain it. I just think that lucky girl syndrome can't take you exactly to where you want to be. And that's why I wanted to talk about it because I think that you just have to be cognizant that life is not happening to you. Your life is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Your reality is completely up to you. You have the power and you have the ownership. And I think I've literally grown a community of people and and my videos where I talk about mindset, the bottom line is that in order to get what you want, see the manifestations of that in real life, the first step is ownership in thinking that you can do it by changing how your mind operates, right? To say that I'm lucky, to me feels like I'm taking a back seat to all of it and just saying, leave it up to chance. That is not how I feel at all. So while I think it's a good start, I don't think it can take you exactly where you want to go. I think that luck and calling yourself lucky takes 
more of a passive approach. Whereas you don't necessarily have to sit there and believe that you're worthy or deserving. And to me, as your bestie, I want you to take that extra step in understanding that good things happening to you is not luck. It's because you are worthy of good things. You have set the intention, you believe in that, and you deserve good things, period, period. There's no if, ands, and buts about it, and there's no luck involved. You were destined to have a good life. You were destined to have your desires. I truly, truly believe that the things you desire desire you back, and they're not just an accident. And luck, to me, is an accident. It's just like, oops, I stumbled into this, blah, blah, blah. I don't buy that. That discredits how worthy you are to have things that you get. I know some people might think it's taking a dramatic approach, but it is not an accident for you to have the things you want in life. I need you to understand that it is part of your purpose and plan to achieve the things that you want. And those little nudges that you get, those little desires that you have in your heart are not just an accident. You didn't just get your dream job because you were lucky. You got your dream job because you deserve it. You worked for it. You were meant for it. And I want you to start operating under that confidence of I deserve this. I deserve this job. I deserve to be in this position. I deserve to have nice things. I deserve to go on this vacation. Because I think with luck, it doesn't allow you to fully accept when good things happen to you. Like, ah, I was just lucky. No, no, no. I want you to fully accept that you deserve it. And it's not luck. It's up to you. Instead of lucky girl syndrome, I think what I would strive to aim for is the belief that you are super magnetic to getting the things that you want not lucky, that you attract the best case scenario. This is where I go back to like the affirmations that I've talked about in previous videos, where I say things like the best case scenario is always happening to me. For example, this is another reason why I can't get behind being lucky because what happens on a day where you are technically unlucky? It's not strong enough. It doesn't hold enough weight to get you through the bad times. Lucky girl syndrome might help you through the good times, but it doesn't actually keep you stuck stable in moments of turbulence and challenges and difficulties. You know what I'm saying? Whereas with healthy delusion, this is why I love healthy delusion because in moments where I feel like things are not going my way, I still convince myself that that is the best case scenario. It might look like everything around me is going bad. I still say things like, you know what? This is the best case scenario. And I am so thankful for that. I don't know why this is happening to me, but apparently it was the best option. And it always pulls me out of a rut. It it really does. I don't know the bigger picture, but I can tell you that I've gone through plenty of ups and downs and in the moments of downs, in those moments I'm like, damn, what happened? What did I do? I will always look back, whether it be a few days later or years later and be thankful for that moment. I will always be thankful for that. And eventually I understand why, but sometimes it might take a while. It might take days, weeks, months, years to understand that nothing was an accident. It was all meant to make you the most evolved, better version of yourself. So for that, you have to be thankful. But if you operate under the guise of I'm just so lucky and then things are falling apart around you, what is your interpretation of that if you're only using lucky girl syndrome? That's why I think the next step of lucky girl syndrome is healthy delusion. By all means, use lucky girl syndrome. There's nothing wrong with it. I really hope people don't take it as if I'm like shitting on this whole trend because I think it's a great trend, but I just want to offer more perspective beyond it to take you to the next level so that you can sustain those really healthy beliefs and even in the dark times, you can still keep yourself afloat. I encourage you, instead of believing you're lucky, to take accountability for your life. Take accountability for what's happening in front of you. So if you believe in manifestation, prayer, whatever you would like to call it, the first step in understanding that is understanding that your life is a reflection of your inner beliefs. We all probably on the surface would say, I wanna be a millionaire, or I wanna be rich and wealthy, but all of us aren't. And why do you think that is? Because because we are all reflecting our inner beliefs. And go back to my abundance mindset video, I always reference this video because it is much harder than you think to get to your subconscious beliefs. On the surface, we all want money, but on a deeper level, there's a lot of things in the way of us getting that money. I use money as an example because most of us can relate to that. For example, even in my personal career, moving up financially has been an inner struggle 
for me at times because there's a part of me that really isn't comfortable with making more money. And there's many reasons for that. One, because there might be fears around money. Like, oh no, with more money comes more responsibility, so maybe I don't want it. And these are all super deep rooted beliefs. And that's why you have to do so much digging to get to the bottom of that. You gotta go back to your childhood and ask yourself, how did people around me talk about money? How did my parents talk about money? You gotta ask yourself, are you comfortable looking at your bank account? If not, why do you think that is? It's about being truly honest with yourself. And so you can take that and you can do that in other areas of your life. But the first step to having that healthy delusion is accepting that you are in the driver's seat. You control your life and your life is not controlling you. And I promise you when you accept that, that's when the magic starts to happen. There was a time when I was totally just like, I, w I had unlucky girl syndrome. That's what I would call it. I talk about my days in corporate America and I truly just believed that life was happening to me and I was just in this position and I was in the passenger seat of my life. And I will never forget the moment I said, fuck all that noise. There's no way I was put on earth to feel like this. And it took me getting to rock bottom to get to that point of being like, I'm absolutely not going to live like this. I'm gonna fight to the nail to get to the other side, whatever this is, and take ownership of my life. And from that moment, it was like every day became magical because I woke up understanding that today can go exactly how I want it to go. Despite whatever happens, it's going to go my way because I said so and I'm in the driver's seat. So I just encourage you to understand that you are so much more than lucky. You are deserving. You were meant to have the things that you want. It is not luck. It is literally for you. Like I want you to think about something you want right now and imagine that you could talk to that thing. Let's say it's a dream job. Imagine this company calling you first and saying, we really want you. And you haven't done anything to prepare for this job interview. Imagine the confidence you would have going into that interview if you already knew on the other side, they wanted you just as bad. Now take that concept and do that with everything. Act as if whatever you desire wants you so bad. Act as if it's already yours. Have that level of confidence. Don't just say that you're lucky because you are so much more than that. It's yours. So that is my premise with lucky girl syndrome. I'm super excited that we could have this conversation around the topic because I think it opens up a great discussion and it's an important precursor to having the mindset that you really should have. And for anybody who's like really new to the idea of manifestation or setting intentions or whatever you want to call it, I think that this is such a good starting point. But I did want to touch on it because I am being tagged in so many Lucky Girl Syndrome videos and I think it's close, but there's a big piece missing that just doesn't resonate with me. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So let me know what your thoughts are on Lucky Girl Syndrome. Like I said, please don't think I'm attacking the trend. I'm not. I'm just telling you why I don't call myself lucky because I'm very deliberate in taking ownership of my own life. And so I would love to know your thoughts around it. And I hope you don't think I was attacking or anything like that. So if you like this video let me know in the comments and also give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe and i'll see you guys next week